Hello and welcome to today's session. Today we are looking at epistaxis, guys. Epistaxis and epistaxis. This is a Greek word that stands for nose bleeding. Okay, so this is nose bleeding. The nose is bleeding. Okay, great. So we have a, a question here to just help us uh, introduce us to this uh, profound topic. Uh, that a client is admitted to the emergency department with severe epistaxis. The healthcare provider inserts posterior parking. Later, the client reports anxiety and a feeling of not breathing right. What is the nursing action uh, that's a priority here? Should the nurse cut the parking strings and remove the parking? Should the nurse reassure the client that this is normal? Breathing normal? Yeah, this should be eliminated. Should the nurse ask the client to fully explain what they mean by right? Guys, this is stretching the client a little bit. Huh? You don't need to do this. Should the client use a flashlight and inspect the client's posterior oral cavity? Okay, guys, if you do the first one, the, the plant will continue bleeding, okay? The plant will be continue bleeding, probably develop anemia, hypovolemic um, uh, condition that may now exacerbate this condition. So this may not be. So the correct answer, guys, should be that the plant should be able to use a, sport, a flashlight to inspect the posterior oral cavity, guys. And we can be able to go through this literature and see how best and uh, even the other more common questions about it. So on overview, you're saying that um, this is also referred to as nose bleeding and it occurs in the anterior and anterior inferior septal, uh, nasal septal. And this is the most common. It could be anterior, it could be posterior, but the anterior one is more, more common. Or it can also occur at the point where the inferior turbinates meet the nasal, the nasal pharynx. So usually the, it's only one nostril that is affected, but bleeding may be mild to severe or even life, life threatening. Remember, if a patient has severe epistaxis, you need to quickly take the vital signs and look for signs for hypovolemic shock, okay? Hypovolemic shock. You need to insert two large IV catheters, age 16, for fluid and blood replacement simultaneously, okay? Unless you suspect that there is a nasal fracture and if there is none, you need to control bleeding by pinching the nares closed, okay? Then placing a gauze under the nose and applying an ice pack. Okay, have our hypovolemic patients lie down and turn the head to the side to prevent aspiration, okay? To prevent aspiration. Guys, a link will be popping up on how to put the patient in left or right recumbent position, okay? So, if the patient isn't hypovolemic, you can just make them to sit upright and tilt their head forward, like these guys, like this. Okay? You need to check the airway potency. And if the patient is unstable, you begin cardiac monitoring and you need to give oxygen. So what is the history about uh, of a patient that is presenting with epistaxis? What are you interested in as an RN? You need to ask about recent trauma and surgery. Remember, if you are suspecting a nasal fracture, you will not pinch the nostrils. You need to obtain a description of past nose bleeds, including onset, duration, frequency, as well as possible precipitating factors and efforts to control them. You need also to take a history, including the incidence of hypertension, bleeding, liver disorders, and recent illness. Remember, all these are the risk factors, scam causes that can lead to nose bleeding. Find out the drugs, including illicit drugs, and the common drug that is implicated in nose bleeding is cocaine use, guys. Cocaine use, okay? cocaine use. So the patient is taking especially anti-inflammatory drugs that do interfere with the clotting factors, 
okay, and the anticoagulants. Which physical assessment that uh, you're supposed to uh, subject to a patient maybe who's presenting with epistaxis? Of course, we know in physical examination, we normally use the four techniques, inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. So here majorly we'll be inspecting, okay? So inspect for signs of bleeding, okay? You look for trauma, in, uh, uh, trauma, trauma injuries, observe for possible nasal deformity or swelling. You need to inspect the mucosa for signs of dryness, erythema, and or irritation. Inspect the skin and mucous uh, membranes for other signs of bleeding. Then assess, assign, uh, assess the other vital signs. And here, because of the bleeding, the circulation, we are interested with the blood pressure and the pulse. Great. What are the causes? Guys, we have indicated that most of the medical uh, causes will include a plastic anemia, biliary uh, obstruction, liver cirrhosis, coagulation disorders, hepatitis, glomerulonephritis. So you find that um, plastic uh, anemia is both a cause and a complication of epistaxis. So a plastic anemia, you find that it can lead to epistaxis due to decreased production of blood cells. And which uh, component of the blood cells or which part of it is it included? Or the blood cells involved, majorly the platelets, okay? These are normally essential for proper uh, blood clotting, resulting in fragile blood vessels in the, in, the, in the nasal mucosa. Also, we have also the biliary obstruction. How does biliary obstruction contribute to epistaxis? It leads to epistaxis due to alteration in the blood clotting factors and platelet function, potentially resulting from impaired vitamin K absorption and subsequent liver liver dysfunction. What about cirrhosis? How does it contribute to epistaxis? This is normally due to liver dysfunction, leading to decreased synthesis of clotting factors. Okay, so thrombocytopenia, flagell blood vessels in the nasal mucosa. Clotting disorders can directly lead to epistaxis, okay, as a result of impaired blood clotting mechanisms, causing prolonged bleeding from the delicate blood vessels in the nasal, nasal uh, mucosa. Glomerulonephritis, another kidney problem. So nosebleeds can occur with accompanying hypertension. Remember, with uh, glomerulonephritis, we normally have accompanying hypertension, proteinuria, hematuria, headache, edema, oliguria, hepatitis, nausea, vomiting, pruritis, dyspnea, malaise, and fatigue. Hepatitis also, inflammation. It can occur with accompanying jaundice, colored, uh, colored stools, pruritis, and so many others. The other causes could be hypertension, you also have infective, infectious monoclonases, okay? Asthma, the influenza, kidney failure that is also associated with the glomerulonephritis, leukemia, maxillofacial injuries. We also have neck fractures, okay? Then we have polycythemia, vera, the sarcoidosis, sinusitis ac uh, ac acute, skull fracture, systemic lupus erythromatosus, guys. The other con the conditions could include chemical irritants and drugs, like the cocaine we have used, frequent cocaine. We have already indicated that. Vigorous nose blo blowing. Guys, we are advised not to blow nose here, okay? Because that one normally leads to a uh, rupture of superficial blood vessels. That normally leads to epi epistaxis. So what are the nursing considerations? In a patient with epistaxis. Guys, you need to monitor for signs of hypovolemic shock. And the major signs of hypovolemic shocks will include the increased heart rate, low blood pressure, the skin will be cold and clumpy, the patient will present with confusion, and the patient will have decreased urine output. We need, we need also to apply direct pressure by pinching the anterior aspect of the nose approximately 20 minutes, okay? So if it doesn't resolve by 20 minutes, you need to seek medical, medical care. 
If external pressure doesn't control bleeding, you assist with conservative methods such as administration, administration of topical vasoconstrictive agent or applying chemical or electrical uh, cautery directly to the site of bleeding if it can be identified and is accessible. If bleeding persists, either anterior or posterior packing may be, may be needed. Okay, remember bleeding could be anterior or posterior, but this one is more common. You need to administer humidified oxygen by face marks to a patient with posterior packing. Eyes application will also help in vasoconstriction. So how do you control epi uh, epistaxis with nasal packing? Yeah. So you're saying that if bleeding persists despite the use of topical vasoconstrictive drugs or chemical cautery, you need to assist the uh, surgeon with insertion of nasal packing to stop bleeding. So anterior packing may be used if a patient has severe bleeding in the anterior nose. So we have a commercial available inflatable balloon or nasal tampon that may be used to pack the nose. So starting with the infl infl a inflatable balloon device, this one, it has a balloon that is coated with a uh, carboxymethyl cellulose hydrochloride uh, compound. This item acts as a platelet aggregator. So this, sub this substance also creates a lubricant when it comes in contact with water, which, makes, uh, which helps to make it easy for insertion. So after soaking the device in sterile water, the practitioner inserts the device along the superior aspect of the hard palate until the fibric ring is well into the nares. Okay, then using a 20 cc syringe, the practitioner will inflate the balloon until the pilot cuff becomes rounded and feels feels firm when squeezed. So guys, here is a diagram of how this thing happened, guys. You can see the nose and the insertion here, the insertion here. And you can see how it is uh, being um, just uh, supposed to the mucosa so that it can control the bleeding by the capillaries, okay? The next one is we have the, card, the nasal tampon, okay? So to insert a tampon, the practitioner grabs the string end with gloved fingers or forceps after coating the tampon with a water soluble lubricant or antibiotic ointment. So the practitioner inserts the tampon gently, quickly along the flow of the nasal cavity until the strings reach the nares, as shown below. The tampon end expands within 30 seconds of insertion. Or the, even the practitioner can expand it by irrigating it with 10 ml of saline, okay, just to create a pressure on the bleeding, on the bleeding vessel. So guys, here is the tampon, guys. Okay, you put in the water just to apply the pressure, pressure on that anterior part, okay? So posterior packing may be needed if the patient has severe bleeding in the posterior nose or if blood from the anterior bleeding has stuck the gauze that shaped like a ball and secured by three switches, okay? So posterior, Packing with the gauze. To insert this packing, the practitioner needs to advance one or two uh, or two soft catheters into the, uh, the nostrils. Then when the catheter tips appear in the anterior uh, nasopharynx, the practitioner will then grab them with a Kelly clamp or a bonnet forceps and then pulls them backward through the nose. The practitioner then will secure the two ends Switch, uh, switches to the catheter uh, tip and then draw the catheter back into the into the into the nostrils. So this step brings the packing into into place with the end uh, switches hanging from uh, hanging from the patient's nostrils. So the middle suture emerges from the patient's mouth to free the packings when needed. So the practitioner may weigh down the nose switches with a clamp. The practitioner pulls the packing. Uh, securely into place behind the soft plate against the posterior end of the septum. And you can see how it's done here. Kai is the catheter here placed, and you can see how to the extent to which it has gone. Okay? What are the precautions, guys? 
So you need to watch for signs of respiratory distress, such as dyspnea, which may occur if the parking slips or obstructs the airway. You need to keep the emergency equipment at bay. You need a flashlight, you need tongue blade, you need a syringe, you need a hemostat at the, at the patient's bedside, okay? Just to expedite removal if the parking becomes displaced and occludes the airway. You need to keep the call bell within the patient's reach and ensure that the, parents, the patient knows how to use it. Monitor the vital signs frequently. Watch for signs of hypoxia. Signs of hypoxia include tachycardia, being restless. Okay, monitor the patient's respiratory status to ensure that the airway is patent. Monitor oxygen saturation level by pulse oximetry to detect hypo hypoxemia. Elevate the patient's uh, bed and remind the patient to breathe through the mouth, not the nose. Not the nose, guys, because if you breathe through the nose, you're going to worsen the situation need to provide frequent oral care. Guys, a link will be popping up on how to perform oral care, okay? You can review it and see the don'ts and the do's. You need to check posterior or, 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 or pharynx frequently to determine whether there is bleeding into the back of the throat or the backing has slipped out of the position. Remember our question in this case was asking about this option need to administer humidified oxygen as needed, and then you need to provide emotional support because the, the patient is doing mouth breathing. Yeah, this is necessary with the parking in place. So emotional support needs to be given because this is not the usual way in which patients breathe. Such uh, as a result, this can make the patient to be more anxious and start hyperventilating. You need to instruct the patient not to blow the nose for 48 hours after packing is removed. So what are the pediatric pointers? Causes of epistaxis in kids, it could include noise picking, allergic rhinitis, biliary atresia, cystic fibrosis, hereditary uh, uh, fibrogenemia, nasal trauma from a foreign body, and rubella. What are the patient teaching? Guys, when you're during the patient teaching, remember to include the parent's family, okay? Parents, uh, the patient's family and the caregiver, okay? Where, where appropriate. You remember to discuss uh, about how the pinching um, pressure technique, discuss ways to prevent nose bleeds, encourage the use of a humidifier to prevent a dry environment, use the patient, the, the patient not to allow or urge the patient not to blue okay when they are not bleeding teach the, the the patient to squeeze to sneeze with the mouth open not through the nose okay i need to avoid the use of aspirin containing medications and the nsaids because they exacerbate the condition okay so a patient is admitted to the paper whatever yeah we had, we had already said that this patient they need to be able to mon be monitored the posterior oral cavity in case there is a bleeding, okay? So the patient, the nurse must assess the patency of the airway. So the packing might have been dis become dislodged. So the nurse does not need to ignore the patient's concern. The nurse shouldn't remove the packing or give the client false reassurance. The client is too anxious to explain the meaning of the, the statement. Don't ask them, explain to us what is right, guys. So guys, that is the presentation on epi epistaxis. Thank you so much.